America, home of the brave, land of the free. It's kind of like Canada, actually, except we're the true north, strong and free. So we're both free, but they're brave and we're strong. But what good is bravery if you're a weakling? I think strength wins out. Anyways, I'm just kidding. I love America. You got great people, you got great music and entertainment and culture and stuff like that. I don't know about your government, but we're not going to talk about any of that crazy stuff. And actually, I'm less than five kilometers away from the border. If you go out on my street and you look down towards the ocean, which is a few kilometers away from me, you can see America just across the bay. It's Washington. I'm right there, man. I, however, am not allowed in America. Apparently, they don't want me in there. So they said, no. No, no, no. I'm too much of a filthy piece of trash, they said, to be in their country. They never said that, but they may as well have. No, no. In truth, it's a combination of injustice and a couple of mistakes on my part. I did nothing wrong, though. Essentially, I was kicked out of America because of a photograph on my phone. Now you must be thinking, what was that photograph of? A chopped up dead baby? No, I don't keep that stuff on my phone. It was actually quite a harmless photograph. I mean, I guess that depends on who you ask, but I will tell you the contents of that photograph in a bit. First, I gotta tell you how I got up to that point. So this was about four years ago, I guess, and I was dating someone at the time who was from America. I actually met her online. We became really good friends at first, Neither of us wanted an online relationship, but that's sort of what it turned into. And at first it was okay because she was coming up to visit me every month or two. And that was okay for a bit because the plan was I was eventually going to move to America and we were going to be together. She couldn't really come up to Canada because she had a really established career in California. And that was the plan from the beginning. I know it's really difficult to move to America, but that's what we wanted to do. And so anyways, after a while, I don't really remember the time frame, but I guess after about a year of knowing each other, she had come up to visit me about four or five times. And at that point we decided, well, why don't I come down to America and visit you and see if I sort of like it there or just sort of to switch things up and we both thought it was a good idea. So we eventually decided on a trip to Sparks, Nevada, which is like a small like gambling city, I guess, near Lake Tahoe, which we were also gonna spend a night there at Lake Tahoe, and then go to Sparks and then, you know, do whatever. It was gonna be a fun trip. And we had a nice like resort booked and everything. It was gonna be awesome. I was really looking forward to it. It was my first trip like on my own as an adult to another country. And so, you know, needless to say, I was very excited. But Dustin never made it that far. Dustin never got to go to Sparks, Nevada. Dustin never got to see the Lake of Tahoe. Dustin never got to go to Nevada. Dustin never got to have his big adult trip, his big day out, his big adventure. No, 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 because of some prick at the border that looked like Damon John, is that his name? Damon from the shark, the FUBU guy, he made FUBU. That's right, and I know I sound like a crazy person right now, but it happened. Anyway, remember I said I made a couple mistakes? Well, here was the first one. Actually, it's the only mistake I made ever in my life. Uh, I decided to buy the return ticket once I was in America. Why, you ask? Couldn't tell ya. No idea why, not sure why. I just thought I'll buy the ticket there now, and the ticket back later. Why? I don't know. No reason. I just thought I would do it like that. Apparently I enjoy buying tickets, so I like to do it as much as possible. It's a dumb mistake, because when you don't have a return ticket, it makes them a little fishy, because they think I might come in and never go home, just wander around America, avoiding the authorities, living off the grid in America. They think I might do that, which is ridiculous. Anyways, another thing you should know about this story is I wasn't planning on flying there. We were going to meet in Sacramento because she lived near Sacramento. Then we were going to drive to uh, Lake Tahoe together. And Sacramento is really not that far from Vancouver. And so I decided to take a Greyhound. And my ex thought I was crazy. So it's like, why? Why would you do that? I'm like, I don't know. I'll take in the sights. It'll be fun, which it probably wouldn't have been. It'd probably be just like normal highway. After 10 minutes, I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm in America. It's just a highway. It's just a highway like every other Canadian freaking highway. Anyway, so I boarded the uh, Greyhound at like 5 a.m. in Vancouver and it drives to the border, 
which is about 25 minutes away now because I actually had to go up to Vancouver and then back down, go through my city, which is right by the border. Anyways, we're at the border and I'm excited. All right, big, big adventure, big day out. And so everybody on the Greyhound has to get off. We got to walk through a little building, a one-story building. Got to go through a security checkpoint, of course. So I'm sort of at the back of the line because I sit at the back of the bus like a cool kid and I'm watching everyone go ahead of me and everyone's passing by Damon John, the FUBU guy. And he's, you know, waving the stick or whatever he's doing and everybody's getting through. Everyone's getting into America today. Come on through, everybody. Come on through. The border's open. Have fun. Have fun, everybody. Come on over. You know, everybody's got a big smile on their face, going to enjoy their vacation. And then, uh, and then it comes to me and it's a help. Oh, hold it there, buddy. So I'm going through the thing, and then Damon's going through my freaking backpack, which I'm like, hey, he wasn't going through other people's backpacks. I didn't say that, but I thought it. And he's going through my stuff, and he pulls out a prescription pill bottle that was given to me by my doctor for, I think it was an antidepressant at the time. I'm not sure. I forget. But I'm pretty sure it was an antidepressant. Not anything that can get you high or anything like that or be sold or, you know, have any sort of illegal purpose whatsoever. Just an antidepressant that really didn't do anything anyways except make my dick limp. So he thought that was very curious. He's like, what are these? And I was like explaining it to him and then he's like, why are you shaking? And I wasn't shaking. I'm just sort of a naturally trembly person. I always have been. I have a very fast metabolism or has something to do with that. I don't know, but... Uh, I'm like, I'm not really. And so I told him, I don't know. I'm always like that. And he says, well, you seem nervous or something like that. And I tell him, well, like, yeah, you're going through my stuff and you're questioning me. And I don't know why he decided to look through my stuff. I think because maybe it was my age. I was like a mid twenties male and I was sort of dressed in sort of like rough clothing, I guess. I didn't look like super prom and prim and proper at the time, not prom take prom out of that sentence. Sort of unkempt, I guess you could say, but I didn't look like an illegal person. Another thing too, maybe he saw I didn't have a return ticket already, and so he was just gonna question me and go through my stuff anyways. I don't know what it was, but anyways, he's going through my stuff and he's looking at my file, then he says, oh, you don't have a return ticket. So he starts questioning me about that. And he's sort of implying that, you know, I'm trying to do something illegal which, you know, I didn't do anything to deserve that treatment. I haven't spoken a word to this guy up until that point. So he's like grilling me. And then I'm just sort of, you know, telling him the truth because I have nothing to hide. And then at one point he says, we're going to have to go through your phone. I'm like, go through my phone. He says, yeah, go through your phone. I didn't know that was something they can do. I'm like, you can go through my phone. They're like, well, yeah, or you can, you know, turn back. It's up to you. But if you want in America, we got to go through your phone. And I'm like, shit, okay, go through my phone. And I'm trying to think quickly here. I'm like, what do I got on my phone? What do I got on my phone? Anything incriminating? I'm like, I don't know, probably. But, you know, what am I going to do? Go home? No, because I didn't have anything on there that was like a, a crime in Canada. And then I'm also thinking, well, if they go through my like web browser search history, like what do, what do I got on there? I don't know. Probably tons of embarrassing stuff that I wouldn't want anyone to see. <laughs> you know, I can't recall anything specific, but you know, I'm a weird person. So I know there's going to be stuff on my phone that, you know, is, isn't going to look great probably, but I can't, nothing's coming to mind. So I'm like, whatever. Yeah, I, I guess go through my phone if that's how it works. And then so they take my phone and they go in the back. And they're back there for a while, a good half hour, 45 minutes. By the way, I'm holding up the entire Greyhound bus. The entire bus is held up because they want to go through my stuff and question me because they think I'm going rogue in America. So it's taking a while and I'm thinking, well, obviously they found something, you know, that isn't up to code. And so eventually they come back out and Damon, he goes, uh, yeah, you're going to have to come back here. We want to question you further. Um, I questioned me further in the back room. I'm like, what the hell did I do? I'm like, okay. I mean, it's your country, right? So I got to follow the rules if I want in. So I go into the back room, into a little tiny office. It's more or less an interrogation room. There's no like bright light shining in my face or anything like that. But uh, Damon's in there and he brings in another officer, a young lady. She was about 23, 24, maybe probably not much younger than I was at the time. And she was brand new on the job first day or something like that and uh she was training so she was gonna ask me the questions 
and then confirm with Damon if she was doing it correctly. He was gonna guide her through it. So I was like the test subject. Great, like I want this important matter to be dealt with by the, the rookie. Now the first thing they say to me is, we found a photograph on your phone and we want you to tell us what it's all about. And here it is, you guys, you ready for this horrible photograph they found on my phone? They found a picture of weed. A picture of a small amount of weed. I know, I'm just, I'm so ashamed to admit it that I even had it on my phone. A picture of weed. A picture of weed. And mind you, this was several years after Washington State had legalized marijuana for recreational use. And I was coming from a city which, it wasn't federally legal in Canada at that time, but I was coming from Vancouver, which it was basically illegal for the past 15 years. In any case, it's not illegal to have a picture of weed on your phone in either country. I did take the photo myself though, it wasn't like a picture off the internet. And I forget why I took the photo, but I'm pretty sure it was just, I was showing my brother this weed I had. I wanted to show him the weed I had, it looked good or something like that, I don't know. It wasn't for any sort of a legal reason or anything like that. Anyway, so they show me that photo. They're like, can you explain this? And I just explained to them what it was, exactly how I just explained it to you guys. And then they started the questioning. She seemed like a nice lady and she was reading me the questions and they started out pretty harmless and innocent. Like, uh, oh yeah, like, uh, you know, what do you do for work and stuff like that. So I'm answering the questions and they keep getting a little more and more personal. And pretty soon I realized that the line of questioning was designed to get me to reveal any criminal history in my past. And they're asking me fairly quickly and I'm trying to think quickly because I'm deciding whether or not I want to lie or not and just tell them I'm, you know, a choir boy and I've never done anything wrong or do I admit to everything and just be honest because Canada almost had weed legalized federally. Washington, it was illegal. And also I realized that they could probably find out a lot about me just by doing research because it's the US government and I don't know what their capabilities are. And I didn't want to lie to them and get caught because I thought maybe they could ban me from the States if I got caught lying. And I thought, you know, if I'm truthful, you know, maybe any of the crimes or whatever that I admit to, they're no like morally turpit or of moral turpitude, meaning there's no victims or anything like that. You know, the worst person I'm harming was myself. And, uh, you know, they were all very minor crimes in Canada and in most states, but federally, I guess some of my crimes were serious in the eyes of the American law, like marijuana possession and some other things, which I'll tell you in a sec. I guess that's pretty naive, but then again, I didn't think they would come down on me that hard. Uh, I never really heard stories like that. I don't feel like my case is super common. I feel like I really kind of got screwed over. And you hear people say like, oh, we're all slaves to society. And usually I sort of laugh at that sort of thing. But this was one time I really felt like society was preventing me and my girlfriend from being together, from two human beings who love each other, from two countries that are more friendly with each other than any other two countries on the planet. We live, you know, less than like a thousand kilometers away from each other. We're in love, but they won't let us be together. And I felt like that's fucked up. Like I'm a human in this universe. I wanna do what I wanna do, but people aren't gonna let me do that. And I get the reason for borders and laws and all that. I understand all that. It just, at the time, it felt really fucked up. And I was in love. And this really threw a big wrench in our plans because she wasn't willing to move to Canada. And now I wasn't allowed in America. And our relationship fell apart after that because of that event. And I directly blame that event for our relationship falling apart. Although at the end of the day, I don't think her and I were good for each other. And I'm sort of glad we didn't end up together. I was sort of blind at the time, I guess, but whatever. It, it doesn't, that's besides the point. It's still fucked up to do to somebody. Like what if that was someone I was really meant to be with, you know, that would be like an outcry. But I guess if she really was the person I was meant to be with, we'd probably get married and I'd move there anyways or whatever, you know. It all worked out the way it didn't, it's fine. So I decide I'm not gonna lie. 
and we're going through the questioning and eventually they get to like drug use and stuff like that and at that time i had just gotten out of rehab for crystal meth use and there's some posts about that on like my facebook and stuff and i talked about it like online like on my youtube and stuff and i don't know i figured they probably could have found out that i was in rehab for crystal meth fairly easy if they did a bit of research so i didn't want to lie again and so i said i told them the truth i told them i just got out of rehab for this and that i was never charged with any crimes for that or anything uh, i'm doing better now i was working steady at the time and all that and I really didn't think at the end of all that questioning, they would say to me, actually the woman, he made the woman say it. And she was really, really feeling guilty. You could see it on her face. He's like, they went away for another 20 minutes and deliberated, I guess, but they came back and then she's like, yeah, so because of this and that and blah, 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 fucking blah, you're not going to be allowed in America today. And actually you're going to be barred from entering America. Sorry. And I'm like, oh, we'll come again. And that was such a piss. I was so excited. I was going to go to Sparks, you guys. Tahoe, Lake Tahoe. Me great. My first adult trip. And uh, nope, nope. You're, you're going to go home today and watch fucking YouTube podcasts. As usual. Anyways, after they said all that bullshit, I was like, all right, I guess I got to call my girlfriend now, which I did. And she was not happy at all. We were both really upset. It was really, really disappointing. And it really sort of depressed the hell out of both of us for the next couple months as we realized the situation we were in. It was heartbreaking. And um, Damon, Damon John is now my least favorite shark by far. I always like Kevin anyways. He's Canadian, actually. I wonder if Kevin can put in a good word for me. Uh, that How does that work? I don't know, Kevin. Anyways, that's basically my story. I'm not allowed in America because they found a photograph of weed on my phone. Which, so that's not the direct reason, which led to them questioning me, which I admitted to using weed and, I guess, being in rehab uh, means I did meth, um, which is a crime federally in America, and that's a reason for them not to let you in. If you admit to any crime at the border, they won't let you in. Keep that in mind. I forget what they gave me or told me, but I remember them specifically saying it was for the weed, admitting to the weed use. So I don't know why they didn't count anything else. Maybe they just tried to go lighter on me or something like that because there is an appeal process I can go through. That's right. That's right. I'm not totally banned for life from America. I'm not like exiled, but to get back into America, I got to jump through a bunch of fucking hoops pay a whole bunch of money like a thousand us dollars and then go through this whole lengthy process get all these documents crime checks uh like all this stuff all this crazy stuff it's a huge list they gave me which was just so daunting and by the end of it all it goes to one judge who reviews it and decides yes or no it could all be a big waste of time. And at the time, I was like, all right, you know, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll jump through. I'll jump through Uncle Sam's little hoops if you want me to. I'll play your little game, America. But uh, eventually, you know, you know, it's a lot of paperwork. Coupled with the fact that our relationship wasn't doing that well. At the, and she, she started seeing another guy also, which also made things quite difficult moving forward. Which honestly, I really don't blame her. And when that happened, I wasn't really that heartbroken because I was pretty much over the whole thing anyways. We were both sort of looking for a way out, I guess. She just kind of did it in like a shitty way. <laughs> it's all good, it was a long time ago. And you know what? I'm happy with where I am now. That's my story, guys. I hope you can learn something from it. I hope I saved someone a lot of headache. Have a nice day. Cheers. Love you all. I'm gonna go get a little bit of a step.